As a Russian referred to as Merlin arrived in Vienna, his whole body trembled. For months, he'd been telling his handlers that someone was trying to get into his emails, and he was worried for his safety. But the CIA officials continually reassured him that everything was going according to plan, and instructed him not to open the envelope meant for the Iranian representative of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Still, the Russian was starting to get cold feet. After all, he was the main asset of Operation Merlin, a top-secret American plan to hinder the Iranian nuclear program. The operation became one of the most spectacular CIA screw-ups in the agency's history that we know of. A dangerous possibility. The Iranian nuclear program is a scientific effort by the Middle Eastern country to research nuclear technology and allegedly develop their own lethal weapons. The program's facilities over the years have included three research sites, a research reactor, two uranium mines, and uranium processing laboratories, each including three known uranium enrichment plants. The program was established in the 1950s with the help of the Eisenhower administration's Atoms for Peace, a program that opened up nuclear research to civilians and countries without previous atomic experience. In 1970, Iran endorsed the Non-Proliferation Treaty. This landmark international treaty limited all countries' nuclear programs for peaceful use by subjecting them to close supervision by the International Atomic Energy Agency. However, only nine years later, the Iranian Revolution turned the tides in the country's relationship with Western-based treaties. During the one-year, one-month-long Islamic Revolution, the Pahlavi dynasty that had been ruling for over 50 years was overthrown. The last Shah, or King of Iran, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, was considered by many as a puppet for all non-Muslim powers, particularly the United States. The ruler was very close with President Jimmy Carter, and his government was perceived as corrupt and oppressive. By early February of 1979, the Shah had been replaced with an Islamic Republic government, superseding a pro-Western authoritarian monarchy to an anti-Western theocracy ruled by Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini, a leading force of one of the factions in the revolution. The program went into abeyance during the conflict, with many of the operation's original scientists fleeing from the country. Following the clash, and after the disastrous eight-year war with Iraq that ended in 1988, Iran resumed its nuclear agenda with the assistance of China, Pakistan, and Russia. The country completely disregarded its previous agreement to focus on friendly technologies, continuing the program away from the public eye. In the early 1990s, Russia formed a joint organization with Iran, codenamed Persepolis, which provided the Middle Eastern country with top-notch nuclear experts and plenty of previously unknown technical information. In the joint venture, Tehran was supported by five Russian institutions, including the Russian Federal Space Agency, to help them improve their missile technology. This information exchange was personally approved by the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service, as well as President Boris Yeltsin. The Russian. By the mid-1990s, newly appointed CIA Director George Tenet chose his close friend and co-worker James L. Pavitt to lead the new Counterproliferation Division, or CPD. Pavitt immediately began planning a major operation to target Iran's close-guarded nuclear program. The plan began to take form by 1996, as the CPD gathered nuclear experts at a national laboratory to design a crucial part of a nuclear explosive device called a fire set. The device was so flawed that it could never be made to work. The component would then be brought to Iran's attention in hopes that its government would buy it and spend large amounts of funds, time, and manpower to fix it. And to hide their cover, the CIA would attempt a dangerous maneuver. In September of 1996, the CPD sent a now-released letter to CIA Office Number 16, which claimed that they were looking, quote, for a Russian emigre asset candidate with a background in nuclear weapons, particularly in the electronics fire set area. Our intention is to have this individual, once vetted and trained, offer help to the Iranian nuclear weapons program. The CPD then recruited a former senior Russian nuclear engineer, simply identified as Merlin, in all redacted CIA documents. Starting in 1997, Merlin began receiving a monthly salary of $5,000 plus travel expenses to pose as a renowned scientist trying to sell his designs to the highest bidder. The weapon chosen to be tampered with was based on the Russian TBA-480 fire set. During preliminary investigations, the CIA estimated that this device was more advanced than anything required to get a first-generation nuclear weapon operational. Playing with nukes. By 1997 and 1998, while the scientists at the National Laboratories designed a fake set of plans for the ineffective fire set, 
Merlin spent his days writing emails and letters to Iranian organizations and individuals who he thought might have some interest in the subject. He signed the documents with his own name and lied about having worked at the famous Soviet Arzama-16 nuclear weapons laboratory. However, the sabotage plan soon faced significant issues. In the late fall of 1998, when Merlin was introduced to the fire set and its accompanying instructions for the first time, the Russian identified the fire set's design flaws almost immediately. The Americans were shocked. Merlin was more versed in this technology than the Iranians to whom he was supposed to sell the designs, but they didn't expect him to be able to identify the flaws. The CIA tried to convince the Russians that the engineers hadn't purposely tampered with the design, trying to deceive both the targets and the asset, and reassuring him that the Iranians would not do extensive research. But Merlin continued to worry over the Iranian scrutiny and its ramifications. He soon began refusing to use his real name in his letters, and by 1999, he was terrified that some of the emails he had gotten back from a potential buyer were sent from Iranian intelligence. Merlin even informed the CPD that he had received error messages telling him that intrusions had been detected on his Hotmail account twice, raising the possibility that his emails could be used to track his residence. Vienna In early 2000, Merlin threatened to quit the project and walked out of a meeting while he and his handlers were going over the details of an upcoming trip to Vienna. During the journey, he was set to deliver the plans to the Iranian representative of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, the UN body created to regulate nuclear technology. Encouraging Merlin to go forward with the plan, the CPD and Pavit handed the Russian a sealed envelope with the device's blueprints and instructions, asking him to deliver the documents without opening the seal. Once in Vienna, however, Merlin got cold feet and opened the envelope. Not wanting to be caught in the possible crossfire if Iran found out about the plan, the Russian added a handwritten letter noting that the design had a flaw and that he could help identify it. Also, instead of personally handing over the package to the Iranian representative, Merlin dropped the envelope in the Iranian embassy's mail slot. Within days, the Iranian officials sent to Vienna returned home, most likely with the blueprint. When questioned about his decision by the CIA, the Russian claimed that he couldn't find the Iranian embassy, even though he had the address and directions. Merlin added that when he was finally able to find the building the following day, he didn't have the package with him, and after returning one day later, the office was closed, so he had no choice but to leave the envelope in the slot. For months, the Americans waited, but the Iranians never reacted to the trap, and the response never came. Sterling and Risen Operation Merlin remained active until the CIA finally gave up and shut it down in 2003. In 2006, the New York Times author and intelligence correspondent James Risen published the book State of War, in which he related how the CIA attempted to deliver a defective Russian device to Iranian officials. The author confirmed that both President Clinton and his successor, President Bush, endorsed the plan. Risen also alleged that several attempts to publish the details of Operation Merlin in 2003 were thwarted by the intervention of National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice. Not long after the book's publication, U.S. intelligence representatives declared that Risen's account of Merlin was inaccurate. Jennifer Millerwise, then the public affairs director for the CIA, stated that, quote, Every chapter of State of War contains serious inaccuracies. The author's reliance on anonymous sources begs the reader to trust that these are knowledgeable people. As this book demonstrates, anonymous sources are often unreliable. The CIA then opened an investigation to find the mole behind the leak. According to the organization, the culprit was Jeffrey Alexander Sterling. Sterling was a former CIA employee who, from early 1998 to May 2002, served as the chief operations officer of the human assets of the Merlin program. In early 2011, the Justice Department charged the former CIA officer with leaking classified information about a secret U.S. effort to disrupt Iranian's nuclear program to James Risen. Sterling always maintained his innocence, and in May of 2015, he was sentenced to three and a half years of prison for mishandling national defense information, becoming the fifth person in the history of the United States to be charged under the Espionage Act. Merlin's identity was never divulged. The Effect of Merlin Instead of hindering Iran's nuclear program, Risen's book alleges that Operation Merlin actually accelerated it. But it's believed that once the flaws in the fire set were identified, the plans were compared to other sources, and the Iranians were most likely able to fix the device. James Pavitt, the ringleader of Operation Merlin, and his friend, CIA Director George Tenet, continued their friendship throughout the failed scheme. The two men were so close that only one day after Tenet retired from the CIA in June of 2004, 
Pavitt announced his own retirement, ignoring the ramifications of the unjust imprisonment of an American lawyer and of their involvement in one of the Central Intelligence Agency's most notorious blunders in American history. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this and all our other Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting historical and military content.